For those of you who want something more tangible, I'll show you what I did when I first started out before I went to eliciting. The youngster acted inappropriately. I asked him what level the kid acknowledged it, did it again. Okay, then I gave him an essay, which as you can see is in your resource guide. The essay really did three things. I wanted the kid to acknowledge what he had done. I was really not interested in how his writing was or how her writing was. I was just interested in did the youngster accept the responsibility for what he had done? And you can see the three questions I asked. Now, the purpose of it was for me to continue to teaching and for it to give the youngster a responsibility producing activity. But again, I gave the kid a choice. When I gave the kid the essay, I asked, do you want to do it, fill it out in your seat? Or would you prefer to fill it out in the back of the room? Or would you like the learning buddy to fill it out for you? Or help you fill it out? Sometimes I may even have said, would you like to fill it out in the office? So I've given the kid the option, okay? Inevitably, they choose to fill it out at their seat. And what they did is when they filled it out, the procedure was, when they finish it, put it on my desk. I meandered over to my desk and I quickly looked to see whether or not the kid accepted responsibility. There were two cases where a kid, where kids, I had the impression they did not accept responsibility. I took another blank essay and gave it to the kid and I said, you and I know better. Let's try it again. In both cases, when they fill out the essay, they put it on my desk. Now, at the bottom of the essay, on the form itself, you'll notice two points. I asked them, do they think it was personal, and what did they want me to do with it? I wanted them to walk out knowing that I had no ill feelings about them at all. So the first question is, do you know why you got the essay? And of course the answer is, if they act on level B, I will use authority with them because they are not mature enough to act at an appropriate level. And then I said, what do you want me to do with them? They said, toss it out. That's exactly what I did right in front of them. I tore it up and I put it in the waste paper basket. For me as a teacher to spend time keeping records of the kids' misbehavior is a total waste of time for me. I didn't want to spend my time doing that. So, that was the essay. Now, every day is a new day. If the next day the kid was okay, fine. If the next day he had difficult with impulse control, I would give him an essay again. Now, there came a time, however, when the essay was not effective, in which case I went to the referral. It's, as it's called, the self-diagnostic referral, and you see what it says. For the kids in grade six and up, there were a number of questions. For lower grade kids, there were fewer questions. The only question I ever get from a teacher is, well, what does number five mean? Number five means that if you're acting on level B, you're basically saying, better bosses, because we're not mature enough to act on that level. By the way, let me go on a little tangent for a moment to give you an example of how simple this approach is. It's springtime. Middle school, kids are active. The pollen is up, the winds are up, it's after lunch. You've tried everything you possibly can to settle the kids down, unsuccessfully. That's all you have to do is, assuming you have a management technique, get the kids' attention and then simply say, would you like me to be a level B teacher? Notice what I've done. I have prompted them to reflect. And it's amazing how they will settle down. You see, when you're teaching the levels, you add the idea that, for example, if you're acting on level B, you're saying to me, the teacher, that you're not mature enough. Now, no one likes to be boss. Do you like to be boss? Nobody does. So what you're saying to the kids is, in part, you are using or helping to determine the type of teacher that you want. 
Because if you're operating at a level which is unacceptable, A or B, you're saying, you better use authority on us. No kid wants to have authority used on him. By the way, going back to eliciting, I am using authority, okay, but I'm not using coercion. Let's not confuse using authority with using coercion. The teacher is always in charge with this program. It's not, it's not permissive. I just use authority, but I don't use punishment for a number of reasons which we'll get into later. Review guided choices starting on page 40 in the resource guide. This page explains both eliciting and using the forms. Now feel free to print these and any other form or pages on the resource guide. You do not need to print the entire resource guide. Just go to your printer and just click on print this page only. The essay discussion and the questions I ask students before I toss the essay form is on page 41 of the resource guide. The actual form for grades 5 and above is on page 42. The forms for grade 3 and 4 are on page 43. You would not use forms with lower grade students. Instead, have them draw, speak into a recorder, explain to another student, or any other technique to get the extra to reflect on the inappropriate level that he or she has chosen. Then elicit a procedure to help the youngster control future impulses. The self-diagnostic referral forms are on page 44, 45, and 46, depending upon the grade level. The explanation that I used in the rare time that I sent two diagnostic referral forms home are explained in the parent note, or on the parent note, on page 47. Along with the parent note that I mailed home, I also included copies of the two self-diagnostic referrals and a description of the levels from the student page, which is on page 16 in the resource guide. Remember that if you want a student to change, the student must put forth the effort, not you, the teacher. So the only writing I did was to complete the bottom part of the parent note where I described the problem and the envelope that I sent home with the forms. The student did all the other work. The, the sample letter that I sent home to introduce the discipline program is on page 48. The school sample is on page 49. Now, before you go any further, stop viewing here. Refer to the resource guide in front of you and then review this session. Again, you will find this will be a good investment of your time and your effort because I have shared so much, it's almost impossible to remember each step in one setting. Now, once you understand the guided choices, you will find it easy to implement, but you need to review it again to make it simple and easy for you.